the heartland breakout for our what's up, what's up meeting. Okay, so the first thing I passed out, and I will send a digital copy to you lovely people online, um, is the six habits of a highly effective small group leader. So if you recognize this man's picture, this is actually our current children's minister. He previously was at Lifeway, and you can go find a lot of his articles still. But um, the first one is to be prepared. To, the second one is to be smart. Be on time is the third. Be intentional is the fourth. Number five, be flexible. And six, be relational. So I'm going to use this as we talk through some other materials. I've been here. Come on in. Have a seat. And, um, but the very first part is to be prepared. So in order to best be prepared for our um, worship hour in Heartland, if this might have to share these, um, is if we know how to use our Heartland curriculum. So I know most of you guys, you guys have to share, is, um, you probably already looked at this either digitally through Ministry Grid or I sent it, I think the first Sunday it was attached to the, my weekly email of this fall curriculum. But I can attach this every week if it's helpful, if it's not. But um, I apologize in advance, there might be a lot of reading because I want to go through this. So the Bible Studies for Life worship enables kids to experience interactive, large group worship in a kid-friendly setting. So the curriculum can be customized to fit um, the needs, and we see that, Christina and I, as we, oh, and Stephanie, and Dora, because you're in, I keep forgetting, I actually have like, leader leaders in the room with me. You're all leaders, you're all helpful. There's no disclaimers, but is that the difference is even between the four-year-olds and the five-year-olds, we change things up. The difference is between first hour, where we maybe have five children, or 10, maybe, in the five-year-old heartland, and then second hour, where we've got 25, or 50, you know, so we have to, you know, be flexible, which is again one of the other ones, but um, knowing what all the different parts of the curriculum stand for, I think can be helpful. So, um, in the little table at the bottom is what I mostly wanted to touch on, is that the huddle ups are always on the first page of the curriculum that I attach or that you can see in Ministry Grid, and actually it's not the first page, it's the second page, I'm sorry, and they can be used at the beginning of the hour or at the end of the hour. There's always three things on this list. One of them is always a coloring page. And then the other two are sometimes a craft or an art activity that they might make, or it might be a game, or sometimes there's like a little game one, a coloring sheet, and a craft activity. Um, so it kind of changes up. But the one that's always the same is the coloring sheet option. A little variance that I do is when our kids come in second hour, they sometimes have already done the coloring sheet and they don't want to do it with me. I tell them, turn the page over and draw me a picture then. And then to extend the time, I say, you can't put that picture in a cubby or you can't put it over, you know, in your pile until you show me what it is. So when you're done drawing your picture, raise your hand. And then to also extend it, I'm like, let's write your name. So with the four-year-olds, they might not know how to write their name. You take a little bit of time and then the other kids are calling, hold on, I'm here with Johnny. I'm going to be right over to help you next. Uh, with the bigger kids and the five-year-olds, some of them know how to write their names. Have them show you it because then it just... It, it makes the activity longer, which is nice as a teacher, but it also, like, it helps them with life skills. Like, we're here to teach them about Jesus, but we're also to teach them life skills so that they can read and write, so that they can read and write about Jesus. Then we always have a countdown video, which is um, just to help get all the kids ready to hear or see the countdown video start. They know they're supposed to start helping pick up um, and clean up the area. Um, we do worship songs next. And I have started coupling them together two at a time, just because the lightweight songs are very short. They're short on purpose so that they can, and very repetitive so that the kids can learn the words. But because they're short, it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. Like we actually just did the one song at each of the, our worship time would be you know, shorter. So um, there's usually two songs. And I explained this in my weekly email where I'm trying to do the two songs from last month. We're going to do the two songs that actually go with this month's curriculum, and we're going to do the two songs that go with next month's curriculum. The lesson has a nice script that feeds you into one of the songs. So that song should always come first. So say, oh, next we're going to sing a song about how we're going to, uh, God helps us when we're making decisions. So that song would be first, and then the second song would not necessarily be in this week's curriculum. Does that make sense? 
So then the big picture with the songs is that they'll know last month's songs because we sang them last month and actually we really sang them two months ago. They'll learn this month's songs because they're this month and then they get used to next month's songs so that when next month comes and those songs fit our curriculum, they'll already be exposed to them. That's my idea. And then we do want to try to maybe start to incorporate a couple of like oldie favorites or if you guys have some that you're like oh i sang this when i was a kid or like my god is so big and so strong and so mighty well we can also um put those in and I, my idea is that those will probably be like the last two songs of the whole worship hour after this real life connections so that it's, I don't know, it makes the most sense for me to place in there because it's not necessarily exactly related to this week's lesson yes so the last two songs are normally it might be like a BBS song okay. or the okay. When I Look Up. We, ha we haven't done it, like, we didn't do it last month because this is the first time that now we've had September month songs, mm -hmm. we have October month songs, and then we've, these two new ones are November's. So then we'll just keep doing that. So probably starting in November is when I'll add all these extra songs at the end. So is we'll have eight songs total. Oh, okay, not six, you'll have eight. Oh, okay. Yes, because right now at the end, which sometimes in, in the small and four-year-old small heartland we because we get to go to playground yay um we don't yay. even like get to like the missions you know slide or the missions video when there is a missions video but the idea would be after that we have one more little like connection point and then we would have like two more songs to sing so, yeah. and that's where i think it would be fun to have ones that aren't the good they're still going to be biblical they're still going to talk about god but they may not necessarily relate directly to the unit you know no one else is like our god It'll be, there's nothing wrong with a Christmas song in summer, you know, we just tell, oh, we're going to sing this song because it's fun and we know it, you know. I, I have a suggestion. I was wondering if maybe uh, when, during pickup time, we ask parents for their input on songs they sing to their kids at home. Maybe we can get some ideas from them. Yeah, we can. Like, we what, can what, what, yes, I'm, I'm, I like the idea of asking parents for input. It could happen when they're waiting in the long lines to pick up their kids. Um, they may be less than enthused to give us input then because they're trying to pick up their kids. And no, in a very flexible but, way. Yeah, some sort yeah. of way to get definitely parent input because it's fun to see them when they have heard a song that we're singing. So they're like, oh, I sing this at home. And you're like, oh, that's great. Like, it really is. It's great because you already know it. Um, but yeah, for sure, if parents are singing um, other songs and trying to like have those maybe be the bonus. Especially so, uh, asking parents who we appear to be more involved mm -hmm. in their kids. There's yeah. some kids who really want to know what happened in church, giving us feedback about their kids. We could just ask them, you know, yeah. we might get some um, information from them about recommended songs. Yeah, that's definitely, I like I like that idea. Um, what we had at the door pickup today were the little green tags, or the green things with the QR codes. So what we could do somewhere on there is even have either a third one that says like fill out this quick survey to let us know some of the songs that you're yeah. singing at home, something like that. Because those parents who are more hands on are going to be the ones that are more likely to fill out a survey to tell us what songs yeah. they're singing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so then as you go through, uh, we don't have to actually read all of these, but I like how the columns tell you like you're going to do a welcome and prayer. What is what's the point of it? It introduces the Bible story and the Bible verse. Um, something that's on. Uh, it's not on here. Let's sit. Um, the third column I really like, which, like, from a visionary perspective of being the coordinator, you can see that there is a worship leader, a Bible study leader, and a connection point leader. So this is why I think it would be really ideal to have three adults who truly are like a team for the hour, um, and one of those adults can be the employee teacher that's in the room. Uh, but it, it might not be, or sometimes because the employee teacher is usually at the door trying to like get the tags and the signatures and all of that, that's kind of their designated duty. So then you need like three other adults to be doing this because it would work seamlessly, potentially, with the little scripted, the way the curriculum is scripted because it's the worship leader would welcome, you know, would sing the worship, lead the worship song. Then the Bible study leader does the welcome. Then everybody watches the video. The connection point leader would then come up and say, you know, okay, we're going to play this game. And you get a new face, a new leader, and it helps to keep the, the kids' attention versus being like, oh, it's Miss Julie speaking again. Or, oh, it's Miss Christina talking the whole hour at us. Um, and so when we do have other volunteers, we try to delegate that 
you know, to, to someone if there's a little game like, okay, but it can be hard when it's someone like just showing up and they may not have had as much time to prepare, which is why I love this vision of this is the week one, first hour, five-year-old Heartland team. Like, figure out who's going to be the connection point leader for that week, who's going to be the Bible study leader, who's going to be the worship leader. You know, since Christina's there every single Sunday, maybe it makes most sense for her to be the Bible study leader for both hours. But then, depending on who, and I'm talking to my online friends when they watch later, who serves which Sundays, they would be the worship leader. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to have a great voice. It doesn't even mean that you have to have all the motions memorized. It just means that you have to have a willing servant heart to be up there and um, engage with kids. So that's why when I say I would love to have five leaders, five adults in the room, it's because there, there is a job for everyone. I think sometimes when we say we need this many people, Volunteers, parents, even us, were like, what would we do with all of the help if we actually got it? I have a job for everyone. Sign up to serve. I'll give you a job. So I liked this little how to use the curriculum. So that's how you be prepared. You get it. Okay, the next thing, the teaching begins at the door, which is what you guys got in the heartland, or yes, when we were in the big session. Um, talks again, talking about like, if you can designate a teacher to greet the kids and the parents at the door, which is where I really love my employee teachers because you are you guys are here almost every single week and the parents get to know you the kids get to know you at least your faces you know your names and so you're a friendly face um to have at the door it's not that we're not friendly but like we're leading the worship hour so um and even it could be someone who serves once a month who's at the door but it just it causes it's not as consistent so um so anyway the teaching begins at the door is very a helpful thing I have started to include a link to the slides and the songs in my weekly email. So if you feel so inclined to look at them ahead of time, you can. Oh, and watch yes. the motions, learn the songs and stuff. And then if you have Spotify, listening to the songs on Spotify, we listen to them in the car all the time. So I mean, I'm familiar with the words because I have preschool kids and because it's my job for both of them. I mean, both reasons. So that's that. The second part is to be smart. We are like, all right. So let's see. Be smart is which ways teachers can connect with kids and their families. So you can read this at home or on your own time. But if you send a welcome letter, greet each child at the door, um, contact the families that are in your class regularly. That was kind of like your idea at or like find parents that are already, you know, engaged. Um, let's see what's the next one. Sending a weekly email. So I send you guys a weekly email as leaders in the room. <coughs> We send, as a church, first friends, preschool ministry, we send uh, families a weekly email. And then writing postcards is big. I haven't really figured out uh, a good rhythm to get into for Heartland, but I think it would be an added bonus for kids to get something from the people that lead you know, their worship hour. So maybe we can try to do one like soon so that it gets there before Christmas, and then we'll probably do one like a Christmas card or a Christmas note. Um, and then maybe one or two in the spring. But then, and then being intentional to greet families when we're outside of the classroom. So if you do see them around the church or even just around the suite as you're walking to or from class, um, I think it's helpful. Like I went to a birthday party yesterday and there were a lot of church church friends. And the little kids were like, why are you here? You're normally at church. I was like, I know, isn't that so great that we're like at church together and we're friends together? This is so cool. So anyway, the um, ways teachers can connect with their kids and families, I think was a, Another good little thing. Oh, I meant to teach to print this little chart that's on the fridge in our research room. I'll try to send that to you guys email. But it does break down characteristics per age. Um, so there's two little columns for four-year-olds and five-year-olds, which will help us know like, is this child behaving according to their age? Yes or no? Like, oh, it is normal. Like, I'll pick on two-year-old because I have a two-year-old. He like everything is his. Mine, 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 mine. And I asked him, are you the boss? And he's like, no, buddy, you're not the boss. Like, you know, so that, but that's a very appropriate two year old mentality where he's like, no, I can do this. I want to do this. I'm the boss. And he's learning, you know, um, where he, his place is more he fits. So, similarly, there's age appropriate things for fours and five year olds where they get to learn as well. So, sorry, I didn't put that one. Um, being smart also looks like knowing their personalities, however, you want to track that, but like maybe a notebook or maybe something. Something that so that you know, oh, this friend really loves the, pur the color purple. They're like, oh, this friend is going to get her ears pierced in two weeks. So in two weeks, when she comes back, 
you could like notice something about her. Um, doesn't have to be like visual like that, but you get what I'm saying. Um, whatever works for your personality to remember different things. You know, there's a kiddo in uh, four-year-old heartland who goes to get donuts every Saturday with his either his dad or his family. So when I see him on Sunday, what kind of donut did you get yesterday? And it's fun to hear, oh, we didn't get donuts yesterday, Miss Julie, we didn't go. I'm like, oh, sorry, what'd you do instead? So it's just, you know, those talking points. So being on time, we receive kids, it's the third one. We receive kids at nine o'clock for first hour. So if you can be there by like 8.50, Yay! Um, obviously, those of us who are employees were there earlier. But um, then second hour, the transition starts around 10.40, 10.45. So if you're there at like 10.40, or even, we try to say like 10 minutes before, which can be hard if you go to church. So, you know, when you can. Um, that just helps because the transition time is tricky when you have, you have to have the two adults in the room still, and then one of the, the adults are late. So it's just this wonderfully orchestrated fun that, the more people here, the better. And if you serve first hour and you can stay a little bit longer to help with that transition, that helps too. Um, so, and then uh, being intentional. So, what did I say? The toys, blocks, puzzles, etc., are good time fillers when we don't have enough adults to effectively facilitate the smaller groups. But again, my beautiful ideal that I'm trying to work towards is to have all of these volunteers. So when these kids come in, they've got little like centers and if one of the centers is like the floor puzzles which christina is very intentional about finding a floor puzzle that is either exactly related to the bible story or in a way we can make it work with today's bible story that could be one of the centers but having an adult at every center just helps make it that much more intentional to facilitate conversation about the bible story um, we want to use every minute that we have with the kids to do that so um, being flexible i already talked about that like there's a schedule, there's a curriculum, I like it, let's try to follow it. But if you're doing an activity and it's not working, don't like drive that activity into the ground because the curriculum says so. Like, be flexible and come up with something else. Um, I'm also trying to get a lot of movement activities, like doing the Bible verses where they maybe like run and get a piece and then they come, you know, put the, the Bible verse together on this side of the room, they tag a friend, the next person goes, because these little guys have a lot of energy and we want to get it out of them. Um, and then relational. Um, which was in some of the other articles too, but like we want to be relational with our co-teachers and our co-volunteers for sure because we are the people that we're serving with. But we also want to be really intentional with um, and relational with our children and parents because that's that's our ministry, that's our mission field. So that's my thing. I think I passed out all my articles. I did have a copy of like the curriculum if anybody like wanted to go through and was like, I don't understand what this part is or I have a question about that. Uh, I just wanted a hard copy. Um, for people to look pretty good. So, that's what I have. I'm sorry, I went over a little bit. And I don't know if I should like ask questions on camera or NC.